Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. This is Satoru Iwata from Nintendo. In this installment of Nintendo Direct, which we are broadcasting simultaneously worldwide, we would like to deliver directly to you updates on games that will be launching this year. I know that many of you are looking forward to E3 in June. We are preparing a separate Nintendo Direct that is focused on future Wii U contents that will air around the time of E3. Together with the news that we will share with you today, these should help you to understand more about what is on the horizon for Nintendo. So let's begin. First, I have a game from Sega to announce. It's the latest in the Mario and Sonic series. The upcoming Olympic Winter Games will take place in a city called Sochi. Do you know where this is? According to the world map, it's around here in southern Russia. Sochi is known as a resort town facing the Black Sea. While Russia is often known as a place of extreme cold, Sochi is relatively warm. I thought it would be much colder until I looked into it. But that's enough geography for now. Let's have a look at the game. This is a Wii U game, and as you can see, the graphics are enhanced in comparison to earlier games in the series. The characters are detailed, and environment effects such as snow and ice are realistically presented. Additionally, the game uses the Wii Remote Plus controller, so it allows for very intuitive gameplay. In addition to returning events, such as skiing and snowboarding, we have added figure skating pairs and an event that is new for the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games, snowboarding slope style. Some of the events utilize the Wii U gamepad as well. For example, in curling, the player must draw line directly on the ice rink displayed on the gamepad to share their strategy with the other players. In the biathlon event, which is a combination of cross-country skiing and rifle shooting, the player must switch between the Wii Remote Plus and Gamepad depending on the situation. In addition to these official events of the Olympic Games, the game also offers what we are calling dream events as well, where stages are built in the world of Sonic and Mario and you can do dynamic moves not possible in real life. We also have a mixed event which combines sports such as skiing, snowboarding, skating, and box play in one race. In this event, you can experience a race that is not possible in actual events at the Olympic Games. Please stay tuned for launch timing and more details on the game. I have some additional information on Sonic the Hedgehog that I would like to share with you. Today, I would like to announce that we have entered into a worldwide partnership with Sega on the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. The next game in the series, Sonic Lost World, is a brand new action-adventure platforming game that will launch exclusively on Wii U and Nintendo 3DS. We'll have more details on this game prior to E3. While we have already shared two announcements from Sega today, there is one more we would like to cover before we move on to other topics. We will soon be releasing additional Sega Game Gear titles for the Nintendo 3DS Virtual Console service. 
all of the games you see here will be releasing soon. If you aren't familiar with the Sega Game Gear system or its software, we already have a few of its titles available for purchase in the Nintendo eShop for Nintendo 3DS and look forward to offering more soon. I'll be back shortly to share more information, but now here's more news from the Nintendo Treehouse. Thank you, Mr. Iwata. And hi, everyone. I'm JC from the Nintendo Treehouse, and I'd like to share some news with you on products hitting North America soon. The first item I'd like to discuss has to do with The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages, and The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Seasons, coming to the Nintendo 3DS Virtual Console service on May 30th. While these games can be played individually, when played together, these games offer an ultimate adventure, not possible when the games are experienced on their own. The games feature a link system that unlocks access to additional content that you won't otherwise have access to, like a different final boss. In the eShop, these games will carry a price of $5.99 each. However, because we want as many players as possible to experience all of this great additional content, for the first three weeks following their launch, we'll be conducting a special promotion where you can get them for $4.99 each. This means you can get both games for less than 10 bucks, so we hope you check them out. Mario & Donkey Kong Minis on the Move launched earlier this month in the Nintendo eShop for Nintendo 3DS. We've already shown the variety and depth the game's puzzle modes and minigames offer, but we're confident the puzzles created by players and fans will keep you coming back to this game for a very long time. Here's how you'll be creating your puzzles. Creation is simple and intuitive. Drag and drop level elements from the tray on the right to the grid on the left. Sizes range from 3x3 to 7x7 grids and any size in between like 4x6. You can select from all the tiles in the game to create your own unique layouts. From spike pits, shy guys, or keys to unlock the goal, there's plenty to choose from. You can test out your level and tweak it until you're happy. This is just one example of what you could try to do. Once you're done, tap Share Online. Your level will be viewable by the public and available for anyone to download, play, and rate. There are four ways to find levels created by other players. You can search for a random level, search for top levels of the week, the most popular levels overall, or find levels created by those from your Nintendo 3DS friend list. Once you play a user-created level, you can favorite it if you thought it was fun or interesting. The more favorites a level gets, the more hearts it will earn. Three is the maximum. So if you see a level with three hearts, you can be confident that many other players have tried and enjoyed it. User-created levels are a great way to extend the fun of Mario and Donkey Kong Minis on the Move, and as you've seen, it's easy just to jump right in and start creating. We're very excited to see what kinds of levels you can come up with. Speaking of Donkey Kong, as we revealed in the last Nintendo Direct, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D for Nintendo 3DS features eight new levels for you to unlock. You can unlock these levels in New Mode, where you'll be able to use new items to help you through the levels, and in Original Mode, where you can play them with the challenge of the original version of the game. Each of the eight new levels in Cloud Gateway are based on one of the eight worlds from the original game and contain challenges that you'll only see in this version. For example, Level 9-1 is based on World 1's jungle, Level 9-2 is based on World 2's beach. These levels introduce new mechanics like platforms that force you to move at a faster pace, or large drops of tar falling from the ceiling, or even giant rotating stone gears that can alter the level itself. The game launches at retail and in the Nintendo eShop in just a few days on May 24th, and I hope that you're all excited to play it. Animal Crossing New Leaf will be in stores and in the Nintendo eShop in just a few short weeks. 
We've shared details on the game in previous Nintendo Direct videos, but there's so much to the game that we've created a video series that goes into detail on many aspects of the game. In these videos, the Nintendo Treehouse localization team gets together to reminisce about the series and this new game. Today, we've released an episode talking about the ways players can connect in Animal Crossing New Leaf. Let's take a look. If you and I want to play over Wi-Fi, um, we have to have our systems friend up. So it's not a software-based friend code system. It's, it's the hardware. It's on mm -hmm. the hardware side. Um, so once we've established that, um, you know, you and I can set up the time and I can open my gate and you can come play in my town. Um, probably, at least me personally, the one I'm look most looking forward to is just going out to the island and engage in, in those tours. These videos will be available on our YouTube channel and in the Nintendo eShop on a regular basis leading up to the game's launch. So I hope you can check them out to learn more about this massive game. Also, if you check Street Pass Me Plaza, you may see a new Animal Crossing panel for Puzzle Swap. You may also want to check Swap Note for a special game-themed message. Now we hope you're as excited for June 9th as we are. We're now a little more than a month away from Wario's next great business venture. This time, it's coming to Wii U in the form of Game and Wario. Clearly a business genius like Wario knows how to promote his game, and I'm sure he's got more great ideas up his sleeve that you'll be hearing about soon. But today, I wanted to show you a few more examples of how Game and Wario introduces new styles of play that flow between the gamepad and the television. Island is a multiplayer game that can be played with two to five players, but only requires the gamepad. The concept is simple, but mastering it is where the challenge lies. You and your friends will take turns using the gamepad touchscreen as a slingshot to launch groups of little creatures called fronks onto islands in the sea to earn points. You can also try to launch your fronks in a way that knocks your friends' fronks off the island. So you can try to get the fronks in or get the fronks out. It's, it's something that anyone can play and can quickly lead to round after round of good-natured competition as you try to out-fronk your friends. The Ninja Twins, Kat and Anna, are also back, this time with a whole new puzzle game called Patchwork. It's a true patchwork of puzzle pieces that will challenge you visually and test your pattern recognition skills as you use the gamepad touchscreen to place overlapping large puzzle pieces in just the right way to fill in the entire puzzle. Use the gamepad touchscreen to complete the challenges the girls give out to create a variety of new figures. Kung Fu is a unique motion-controlled split-perspective auto-jump platformer, but what exactly does all that mean? You take on the role of young Cricket, a student of martial arts being tested by his master. You must guide young Cricket through the course on the TV screen as he continually hops on his way. But if you only watch the TV, you may land in a sticky situation. While the TV offers a straight ahead view of the course, the gamepad offers a top down view, showing which pits to jump into and which ones to avoid. So you'll need to pay attention to both screens as you try to jump your way through the course and fill up on dumplings. After all, everyone knows the secret of good kung fu is keeping your belly full. Those are just a few of the levels from a few of the games Wario and the team are bringing to Wii U. The game launches on June 23rd and carries a suggested retail price of $39.99, making it a great value for all the great content and variety of gameplay it includes. For more details about the game, head over to iwataasks.nintendo.com for an in-depth interview between Mr. Iwata and the developers. Speaking of Mr. Iwata, let's go back to him for some more updates. Resident Evil Revelations, which originally released for Nintendo 3DS last year, is headed to Wii U soon with updated graphics unique control using the gamepad, and new game content. In the Wii U version of the game, in a new difficulty mode called Inferno, enemies and items are placed in new locations, and even for those that played the game on Nintendo 3DS, this will feel like a totally different experience. Also, 
Capcom has added the popular characters Hank and Rachel to the action-focused raid mode. There are also new controls using the gamepad. While using the TV as the main screen without interrupting gameplay, players can view the gamepad to display the map and change items on the touch screen so that you can immerse yourself in the world of Resident Evil without interrupting your game progress. You can also play the full game with just the gamepad in off-TV mode or play with the Wii U Pro controller. The game is Miiverse compatible as well, so you can enjoy unique gameplay features such as death message and creature voice. The game is launching in stores and in the Nintendo eShop on May 21st. We recently launched a downloadable demo version in the Nintendo eShop, so I hope you can try it out. Now, I have more information to share with you about new Super Luigi U. This downloadable content for New Super Mario Bros. U symbolizes the year of Luigi, which is happening throughout 2013. Since Mario does not appear in the game, players can enjoy multiplayer by playing as Luigi, Blue Toad, Yellow Toad, and Nabbit. Some of you may not know the Nabbit character, so let me refresh your memory. In New Super Mario Bros. U, Nabbit was a character that stole items from Toad's house, and players would chase him in different stages. This time around, you can actually play as Nabbit. Nabbit has different abilities from Luigi and the Toad. His speed and jump are the same as the others, but he cannot power up even if he collects items. Instead, he won't take damage when he touches enemies. Nabbit is only available as a playable character in multiplayer gameplay, so please select him if you find 2D Mario gameplay to be challenging. New Super Luigi U will be released as downloadable content for New Super Mario Bros. U in the Nintendo eShop on June 20th. As we mentioned before, the game offers 82 updated courses, unique Luigi gameplay, and an additional playable character in Navi. It's a completely different experience from New Super Mario Bros. U. For this game, I understand that some of you may want to play New Super Luigi U even if you don't already own New Super Mario Bros. U. Since it is the year of Luigi, we've decided to release a special standalone version of New Super Luigi U that does not require the New Super Mario Bros. U game. This will be available on August 25th as a packaged product. You can either download New Super Luigi U as downloadable content for New Super Mario Bros. U from the Nintendo eShop or purchase the package standalone version. Here is the price for each version. Since the contents are the same, you can make a decision on which version to get based on your internet connection status and whether you already own New Super Mario Bros. U. Now, I have another game for which we can share a launch date. It is The Wonderful 101 from Platinum Games, which launches on September 15th. More details about the game will be released gradually between now and launch. Please stay tuned. I'm excited to see 
the finished product from Mr. Kamiya and Platinum Games. Next, I'd like to discuss more on Pikmin 3 for Wii U. In this game, instead of Olimar, who was the main character in the previous Pikmin titles, there are three new main characters. Their names are Alf, Brittany, and the captain, Charlie. They are from planet Koppai, which is facing its doomsday due to a lack of food. They set out on their adventure in search of food that can be returned to Koppai. Due to an accident while traveling, they crash land and encounter mysterious creatures called Pikmin. With their help, the three travelers start exploring. Their mission is to collect fruit that can be their new food resource while exploring the planet with the goal of bringing the seeds back to their home. As the explorers found from their preliminary research, there were various kinds of fruit there, but it was much larger than expected. They decided to use the pigments' help to carry the fruit back to the spaceship. After extracting the seeds, fruit can be converted to juice and can act as a food for the player characters as they explore the planet. If they don't have enough food, they can continue their exploration. They must use the limit time of each day to explore for fruit. Night on the planet is dangerous, so you can only explore from dawn to dusk. During this time, it is important to use the different color Pikmin skill. Players can divide activities among the different characters and explore separate areas with different groups of Pikmin in order to progress with their exploration. Once you get the hang of it, you can complete tasks within a shorter time frame. Also, if you make mistakes while you play, you can replay the day or revert to an earlier section of the game. The fun of starting over is that you can tap into what you learned from your last play session to more efficiently complete tasks. In the first Pikmin game, the player had to start over again and again to figure out the most efficient way to complete the exploration of the planet in a limited time. But in this game, there is no big limitation in terms of the days. So it is more accessible for those that have not played previous Pikmin games. At the same time, Experienced players can enjoy the game deeply because the more you play, you get better with the new Pikmin and new courses. And this is another one of your assets in surviving the adventure. In Pikmin 3, the gamepad becomes a handy information terminal called the cop pad. As you can see, the area you have currently explored is shown on the map. You can see where the Pikmin and player characters are located. Also, by scrolling the screen with your finger, you can see the details of each area on the TV screen. Additionally, if you scroll the map while selecting one of the player characters like this, you can move them to a specific location automatically. 
with the cuphead. You can view the overall map and grasp what each character and Pikmin are doing on their assigned tasks. At the end of the day, you can see the replay of the entire day. Fast forwarding and rewinding replay footage to review a day and the number of remaining Pikmin is a part of your strategy to get ready for the next day. I'd like to share some information on the game's control as well. We are preparing a few types of game controls that players can choose from. Play control using the gamepad is similar to playing the previous Pikmin games on the GameCube. The game is also compatible with the Wii U Pro Controller. If you have played Pikmin 2 for Wii, you know that the Wii Remote and Nunchak Control scheme makes it easy and intuitive to decide where you want to use Pikmin. With Wii Remote Plus, these controls have become more comfortable. We are mainly focusing on this control scheme today. Also, you can enjoy the full game without the TV by just using the gamepad. You can also play the game with Wii Remote and Nunchak using the gamepad as a monitor. With the help of Pikmin and the Coppad, can Alf, Brittany, and Charlie save their home planet, Coppai? Today, I shared updates on the game's story mode, but another time, we will be able to share more on challenge mode and the game's multiplayer modes. Pikmin 3 launches on August 4th. Thank you for watching. That is all that I have to share today. See you around that time of E3. Hi everyone, Reggie here. I know many of you are starting to get excited for E3 and we're right there with you. While in previous years, we've introduced new hardware like Nintendo 3DS and Wii U, this year, it's all about the games. In the past, we've focused the E3 hands-on experience on those attending the event. But this year, we're making E3 for the people. And we want to make sure that you get the chance to try our games as well. We've partnered with Best Buy to make it possible for consumers in the United States and Canada to experience select, unreleased Wii U games at more than 100 retail locations during the week of E3. We'll be able to share more details on what games will be featured and where you'll be able to play them in the coming weeks. But we can say now that we're excited to be able to give you this exclusive glimpse into the future of Wii U. As you've seen through Nintendo Direct this year, there's a lot of great content coming soon for Wii U, and there's more to share as we head toward E3. Thank you for watching today, and we'll see you next time.